Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Quantum Leap Futures Morning Leap Session for Friday, June the 8th, 2018. My name is Doug McKay. I'm the founder of Quantum Leap Futures. Each morning we get together in these live go-to sessions to take a look at the market macro to micro, take a look at the structure of the market, and then we drill down to our trade levels, our targets, and our hypotheses. We do create multiple hypotheses. These are our trade plans or our scenarios that we're looking at. Our two main hypos uh, are... Uh, Created, so we wait for the market to open up, see who takes control, and then execute the plan that best suits uh, who's taking control, the buyers or sellers. And then our hypo three and hypo four are our expansion or trend type scenarios, uh, and we look at uh, levels where those would uh, kick in. This is a subscription room. If you're interested in checking it out, uh, send me a email at quantumleapfutures at gmail.com. There's no website. There's no blog. This is not a commercial venture. We do everything live here in the go-to, and then we do live trading and analysis during the course of the regular trading hours. Please read through the disclaimer. Nobody at Quantum Leap is a certified trading advisor. We are retail traders operating within a self-organized learning environment. Past performance is not indicative of future results in any trades that you see in Quantum Leap are for education purposes only. Please trade your own due diligence, your own trade plan, and your own risk metrics. If you're watching this video on YouTube, the hypos are going to be about 15 minutes in. Uh, up, uh, the first part of this is going through uh, our regular routine and building the context for why we're looking at the uh, the uh, levels that we're looking at and the scenarios that we're looking at. So let's get into it. Let's first take a look at the news. There's not a lot of news today. Um, we have uh, 10 o'clock. We've got the wholesale inventories, uh, wholesale trades, and 10:30 we've got the ECR weekly uh, annualized and index. And then at one o'clock we've got uh, the U.S. Baker Hughes oil rig count. Of course, uh, next week we have uh, the summit in uh, Singapore with uh, North Korea. We've got the FOMC announcement on Wednesday. And uh, this weekend, uh, this starting today, we've got the G7 summit here in Canada. So there's going to be a fair amount of headline news, uh, but not a lot of economic news. And we're probably going to balance out uh, going into the weekend uh, as we move towards some very significant uh, announcements uh, and meetings. Um, let's uh, take a look at yesterday. Yesterday, our main hypothesis was a, and remember that our hypo one and hypo two were equally weighted yesterday uh, because I was, uh, I was thinking we were probably going to get a balancing day, but based on the fact that we were in price discovery above the micro composite value area, uh, you know, we had to have a hypo that had continuation up. So hypo one was an open auction out of range, a move down into the naked VPOC and somewhere between the naked VPOC and the 71 area. We were looking for buyers to step it and rotate us up and push through to that uh, 27 uh, 9350 uh, target. Uh, that did not happen. Hypo 2 is what we got. Our Hypo 2 is an open auction out of range, a push up, and somewhere between the 8350 and the 86 and a quarter, we were looking for sellers to step in, rotate us down into the naked VPOC, and then push down into the first TPO single that was left from, uh, from the 6th. Uh, down into the 72.75, and then balance, and then push down and come down into uh, the other TPO singles, and then we were looking for buyers to step in and rotate us up and close somewhere in around the close from yesterday, and that's exactly what we got. Uh, and uh, you know, a, a fairly balanced profile. The value area is valid for today. Um, if you take a look at the two day, you look at the two day, our two day micro composite is 2775.50 and we're below the LVN multiple distributions. Uh, I'm thinking we're probably going to get stuck in this wick and we'll probably dip down and come down into testing the naked VPOC down here, possibly even coming down to the 4550 uh, at some point today, and then uh, creating a larger uh, 
you know, balance area above the microcomposite uh, value area high that we just broke out of. But that's getting ahead of ourselves. Let's just uh, go through our normal routine. Uh, I always start my day using a simple candlestick chart. I start with the monthly. And I work my way down. I use a 9 EMA, 20 SMA. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for how, where are we in terms of the trend? What is the strength of the trend? Do we've got good slope, good separation? Is price parallel and denying nicely? Or are we challenging the trend by uh, challenging the 9 or breaking below or above the 9, depending on the direction? And then are we creating a possible new trend with a break through the 9 and the 20. So on the monthly, 14 months of one time framing up, the one time framing is violated in February, but then for the next three months, we battled the 9 and held, did not close below it. And now in uh, June, uh, you know, we're getting the continuation. The trend is very much intact. And even if we come down into the 2668 area, we have not even violated uh, the or challenged the trend on the monthly. Going to the weekly, it looked like we are possibly getting a rollover here and a possible trend change on the weekly, but they took it back. And right now we've got this consolidation. We're above the 9 and the 20. We're, uh, we're looking for the continuation pattern. And, uh, but uh, we don't even challenge anything until we get down into the 2717 area. Going to the daily, you can see that uh, on the daily we are uh, back in uh, in the trend to the upside, we're losing a little bit of slope and separation, but coming down, it wouldn't surprise me, like I said, uh, that we come down into the, uh, the 2750 to 2745 area today to, uh, to test to the low side and then pop back up and balance out. But the trend is very much intact on the daily. Going to the four hour, you can see that uh, we've been uh, for several sessions in a very strong upward trend holding the nine, and then in the Globex, uh, you know, we broke below and, uh, and you know, getting a possible trend change, but, you know, they've taken it back so far and we're holding, and we're inside of the nine and the 20 right here, and, uh, you know, this will be a decision point. So watch the, uh, the 66 level. Uh, right now, we do have a zipper measured move to the upside with the primary target at 73.50. I'll show you that in just one second. But let's go down to the 30 minute. The 30 minute, we were starting to get uh, a downward trend, and now we're trying to take the uh, take it back and uh, and get the continuation up. Um, so you know, for the most part, we're still in a very much a, a upward trend, and we're above the value area on the breakout and in price discovery on the bigger picture. Problem is we've got rollover going on right now at the same time. Here's the zipper measured move uh, that's still valid right now. This will remain valid until we get into the uh, RTH session. But uh, there's the impulse wave, eight and three quarter points. Here's our zipper, and then the continuation and the target is at 73.50. This remains intact until we get to the uh, below the start of the impulse wave at 59 and a quarter. But we are likely to get interrupted coming into the uh, into the RTH session, and then I'll I'll discount this because we've got new participants showing up. So taking a look at the structure right now, you know, just a little bit of narrative. You know, we had this beautiful trend up into new all-time highs. These all-time highs are unequalized, meaning we have it higher all-time high in the Globex at uh, 87 and a quarter. Our RTH, this is a regular trading hour uh, chart, our, our RTH all-time high is 84. Typically, this is not uh, left alone, and we should at some point in time challenge that 87 and a quarter. Then we come down and we rotate all the way down into a prior balance area, microcomposite VPOC down at the uh, 25 uh, 43 area, find buyer, step up, try to come back up into the 2800s to where uh, they 
uh, found balance before former microcomposite VPOC, and then the sellers step in, rotate us down, we come back down to that area again, hold the higher uh, low, and then we come back up, and we've just been chopping in a very wide distribution area in this microcomposite value area that starts from the uh, breakdown day on February the 2nd. Then we come up, and in the smaller time frame, uh, you know, we create a new balance area in the upper distribution of the uh, of the double distribution within the value area. We get the microcomposite VPOC shift from the lower distribution to the higher distribution. It coincides with the uh, with the value, so we're accepting price here at the uh, microcomposite VPOC on both time frames, and then we get the breakout. Usually when we get a breakout, we get a balancing and a price acceptance above value. Uh, we got that on the first two days. Then we get the continuation pattern uh, on, uh, on Wednesday, and then we get a balancing day on Thursday, and we come back and we repair all those TPO singles, uh, the unauctioned territory. Currently right now, we're trading at 6850 our two-day microcomposite VPOC is up here at the 7550 area. We've got an LVN that's going to be an important level for us at 27.69 and a quarter. And uh, the levels you want to pay attention, if we hold below that, look for the move back down to the 6550 and back down into the 2760 area. If this doesn't hold, look for them to come down and, like I said, come down into the 55 to 45 area. Uh, down here uh, and then uh, balance down here and push back up into the close. So key line in the sand, uh, that was our key line in the sand above, is now below at the 45.50, just above the, uh, the value area. You can use the value area. It doesn't really matter. It's only two ticks apart. I would just encompass this in a trade area altogether. If we get below that, then You've got a high probability of coming down and testing that uh, that gap zone and coming down uh, and filling this gap with the move down to the value area high of the smaller time frame microcomposite down at 39 area. And if that doesn't hold, then I'm looking for a big move down here back to balance down here in the 2250 adjusted to the uh, September contract. By the way, everything I'm talking about is on the September contract. I should have just uh, noted that at the very beginning of the video. Uh, above us, if we get above this uh, this uh, 60, uh, 69 and a quarter, look for them to come back up into the balance at 75.50. If we can accept that price this afternoon, look for a drift up into the 83 and possibly up into the 91.75. So, taking a look at the overnight uh, inventory, the overnight inventory is about 80% net short. Um, we've got this really, really boxy looking, uh, you know, uh, value area right now with this, uh, this, uh, you know, double distribution. We just got the VPOC shift. Uh, the VPOC for the most part was down here, uh, in the European session. We just got the shift back up. Uh, so if we can hold, if we can accept the 68 and a quarter, look for them to push up through towards that zipper measured move at 73.50. There is an LVN right here we have to pay attention to, which is at the uh, at the 71. So uh, if we start moving our, our levels over, our overnight high currently is 78.50. Our overnight low is down at 27.55.74. Based on our 20 period full session daily average true range, which is running at 25.75 off of the low overnight. Our daily upside ATR target is up here at 81 and a quarter. And our downside daily ATR target based off the overnight high is down here at the 52.75. Pay attention to these uh, ATRs today because if we get uh, above or below uh, you know, the average true range, we could get drift. Our weekly open is at uh, 27.36.75. So our weekly critical mass is down here 
at 62.50. So we're trading above weekly critical mass. And if we hold above that into the afternoon, we're likely to drift uh, uh, up as the sellers capitulate and uh, and we get a move up. Our overnight VPOC just shifted. So it's at 27.68 uh, and a quarter. And let's start uh, doing our hypotheses. Our key line in the sand above is 86 and a quarter. Our key line in the sand below is at the 45.50. That will kick you into uh, our, uh, our, our hypo uh, three and four. Let me just move this over. So what is my hypothesis? My main hypothesis, and again, let me grab my drawing tool here, is we're gonna be opening up in range, but out of value. And this is a valid value area that runs between 69.50 and the uh, 78.50. So I'm looking for an open auction in range, out of value. I'm looking for uh, you know a, a fairly wide uh, open auction. Then I'm looking for a push up into the 73.50, possibly come up and close the gap at the two-day microcomposite, but somewhere between the 73.50 and the 7850, I'm looking for sellers to step in, okay, push us down, testing the low, chop here, and then push through down to the overnight uh, low and chop, possibly even a late day probe down into the 50, uh, 50 area, but then basing and moving up and coming up and closing somewhere in here in the 60 four to 60 uh, level and back into this prior uh, balance, the microcomposite VPOC that ran from March the 9th to the 16th. That is hypo one. And I'm terrible with this drawing tool. Hypo two, which we have to put equal weight to because of our current price discovery is a open auction in range, out of value, a push down into testing the low, this low at 60, 63.75 is a weak low. So I'd be looking for them to expand down into the 60 area to the 57 area base here and then get an impulse wave up to test the range low chop right here and then push up into the balance, the two day balance and close somewhere in here around the 73 to 75. That is hypo two. Hypo three is a break, uh, I'm sorry, a continuation day. And I just have to, just let me get uh, my other drawing tool. I've got to bring, there we go. So hypo three is a uh, open auction, just in range, out of value, failure to break the low or just dip down just below but finding uh, buyers right away, they step in, come up into the 73.50, push up into the uh, high from yesterday at 83 and a quarter, and then get continuation and push up into, sorry, into this 93 area and uh, basically go sideways up here above the prior day and get a close, a higher close uh, up above, possibly even a VPOC shift up above the prior day. That is hypo three. Can't draw it very well, but bear with me. Hypo four is gonna be the opposite, which is gonna be a complete take back day. And I'm looking at a open auction. I'm looking for a move up into the value area get up into the VPOC, possibly to the uh, to the value area high, but then I'm looking for sellers to step in, break below the prior day, get an impulse wave down to the overnight low, and then push through down into the 45, break the 45 and push down and come down, and I'm targeting this 37.50, and then find buyers and come up and close somewhere in around the 50 to 51. That is hypo four. So those are my four main hypotheses. Uh, hypotheses, I should say. Um, 
pay attention to pay attention to this wick right here. There is a fifth alternative. This wick right here from yesterday is a possibility we get stuck in this wick here and we get a tight range and just go sideways inside between the uh, you know two-day microposite VPOC and the uh, 60 uh, 667 area and just go sideways in a nine point to ten point range. That would be hypo five. And a uh, quick look at gold. Gold is just not doing anything right now. It is stuck, stuck, stuck. We came down, we you know, we came and tested the composite VPOC. This composite VPOC is the most traded price going all the way back to October the 24th, 2008. We came, we fell out of the balance up here. We came down, we were looking for this big move, and now we're stuck around this magnet. But they, you know, they keep coming back into the 1300. I was telling you yesterday, I was looking for the break of the 1300 for move back down to the 1295.90. And what do they do? They do it overnight while well, I was sleeping. So I didn't get, I didn't get that trade. I was waiting for it, uh, but it just doesn't seem to want to play out. Uh, we're back above in the 13s again, same hypothesis as, uh, as you know, we've been in for the last five or six days. You know, uh, we need to hold the 1300s. If we don't hold the 1300s, I move back down to the 9590. This time, if we make the move, I think we'll go lower and we'll push down into the 84. I don't think it's going to happen today. I think the catalyst is going to be next week. Um, you know, with all the uh, major uh, economic news and uh, major world news. But right now, if we hold the 1300, I'm looking for them to push up. And this time I'm looking for them to come up into the 1309 area and test the upper side of this distribution. I'm not looking for a lot out of gold today. I think we're just going to see a sideways move and chop, uh, you know, between the 1300 and the 1309 area and uh, just go sideways. Anyway, that's going to complete our pre-market session. As always, trade well, trade safe, and we'll catch you on the flip side.